How's it going everybody? My name is Swanny and welcome back to another video. Guys, today we'll be reacting to Season 3, Episode 10 of Demon Slayer. Last episode was all about the Mist Hashira Muichido Tokito, which, oh my god, bro, what an episode. That episode hit every single mark. It had, you know, uplifting funny, it had a very sad, had, you know, nice heartwarming touching moments, it had insane action. Dude, the dialogue in the last episode was... Last, oh my god, bro. Dude, there were quite a few lines where I was like, damn, like, you know, that hits. Uh, whether that be, you know, absolute savage lines from Muichido, or, you know, inspirational quotes from the Master and Muichido. The writing and also the pacing of the last episode was perfect. I thought the writing was nailed. I, I thought the flashbacks dialogue was perfect. I thought Mitsudi's dialogue was perfect. I thought, dude, the pacing too. Bro, that episode was the fastest episode this season. I was actually shocked. As a matter of fact, when I saw the skipped credits at the end, I, for some reason, thought it was the beginning skip credits, like, to pass the intro. The last episode was so beautifully written, I, it's, I can't, like, words can't even describe. We got to see a little bit more into Muichido and what happened after his brother died, how he ended up living after that demon incident. Uh, Lady Amane came to go pick him up. Dude, he was pretty much just infested with maggots, just laying there, about to die. He said they came in the nick of time. He was on the brink of death. Basically, they helped him become healthy again. Uh, he started his training arc, said he trained until he'd vomit blood. I mean, dude, the guy just, I mean, he became a Hushra in three months, right? I remember they made that note, and as we saw him stand before the master after his training arc um, to resemble the fact that he'd been training for only such a short amount of time, he made a few points throughout the episode that I loved. First being that he said the rage that he felt in that moment is something that will never leave his body. That's very big, especially for Muichido, considering he's such a relaxed and I, don't, I wouldn't even say timid. He's just nothing really matters to him type deal, uh, except it does, right? He's a very rageful person, except you know, he deals about it in his own way. I think the mist breathing form is perfect for him. I love the way that they displayed it in the last episode. Filled the environment with mist, and he was so cold, man. It was like, he basically showed like a mirage or after image of himself through the mist. Uh, had Gyoko just confused, absolutely lost, on his back foot, no idea. And then all of a sudden, he's decapitated. And Gyoko makes the point, yo, why is my head upside down? And, uh, yeah, it's just, but it's because you just got absolutely clapped. As Tokito finishes the fight, he gets pale, right? He just exerted so much energy. Uh, he's basically about to pass out. He does what I'm assuming he does. You know, we see a little bit of a tribute of his family. They come to see him, put their hands on him, saying that he did a great job. That shit broke me, man. I mean, it didn't have me bawling my eyes out, but it definitely got me there. Also, the other part that got me pretty emotional was the relief on Nezuko's face after Mitsuri came in and saved Tanjiro. Muichiro's backstory is so well done. Um, again, I made the point in the last intro discussion being that there has to be some reason why the Sun Breathers being, I don't even want to say banished, but purposely put, because it's no coincidence, purposely put in the mountains, in the countryside, somewhere out of society to keep them hidden. Right, because we have Muichiro's family who was woodcutters or wood gatherers. We had Tanjiro's family who's charcoal gatherers or charcoal burners, and it's like there has to be some reason why the strongest breathing form, sun breathing, is being kept, you know, low key, right? Obviously, because should they be known that it's being passed on to the next generation, they'd be snuffed out, right? It's the only breathing form that can best move on as it does. So there has to be some correlation as to why the sun breathers are being put in the middle of nowhere. Uh, fortunately, Lady Amane was able to find Tokito or Muichido before he died, and yeah, wow. I mean, it's just a spectacular episode. It flew by so fast. We ended up wrapping up the episode with Tanjiro getting swallowed and then crushed by the upper four. Uh, Mitsudi comes in, saves the day, cuts it to shreds, and as she drops Tanjiro off and goes in to fight it, Tanjiro's like, hey, wait, that's an upper rank demon. Be careful. And she's like, whoa, 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 whoa. I don't think you know who I am. I, I, I am a Hashira. I get my own soundtrack, and you know what? I'm gonna do it with a smile on my face. She's doing cartwheels. She's showing off. She's swinging her whip sword. She's doing all this. With all that being said, that's all the notes I have from the past episode. This one is gonna be dedicated to her, just like Muichido in the last episode. Yeah, this one's called Love Hashira Mitsudi Kanroji, and I'm ready to see her snap, like we saw Muichido snap on the last episode. So with all that being said, that's all the notes I have from the past episodes. So without further ado, let's jump right into this next one. Oh yeah, you damn slip of a girl. Cartwheels, twirling. Here, have that. Blah. Gotcha. Yeah, she's throwing around these things like it's nothing, man. She's just having fun with it. Like I said, yeah, it's a perfect word. She's playful. She's like, upper four? Nah. That ain't nothing. <laughs> yeah, give him a talking to. Let him know what's up. <laughs> no way. You shameless tramp. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm shocked too, that's crazy. <laughs> oh. 
Ooh. Cat love shower? Alright. <laughs> yeah, me too, Tondro. Nah, you don't want the smoke. Bro, I don't even know how you forge something like that. Facts. Also true. It's Yeah, it is even more impressive that she's able to wield it. Bro, I like the soundtrack. She's clean! <laughs> Cat-legged winds of love? Wow. Dude, that drum beat is fast. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, he's still in there. Get his ass, Tondro. Oh my god, dude, the angles, these camera... I mean... Oh! Dude, she's peeking! Bro, the color is so nice. Nah, he's not sweating it, though. Nah. Oh, he can do it, too! I mean, why not? <laughs> I love the inner monologue. Oh. I mean, damn, Tondra, that would have been a great detail to tell her before she ran in. Oh, wait, I get. Was that what he was trying to do? Uh. Wow. Damn. I mean, <laughs> double damn if you catch my drift. It is baffling. Oh. Tanjiro Hinokami. Are we getting a flashback? Oh lord. Is this Rengoku 2.0? I hope not. What? Prayer is epic. Bro, Michiri's a baddie. What are you talking about? Wow. That's actually insane. Yeah, she gets her birthmark from her dad. Or her birthmarks. <laughs> Put him to shame. No way. They're not even just playing up her strength. She's actually that strong? Nah. Oh, that's how she's able to tank that screech. I mean, the hair color's not weird. It's different, but it's not weird. And believe me when I tell you, every guy wants a girl with appetite. Nah. Guys, if you have something that is unique about you, don't don't hide it like this. Because being unique in this world is the best. You want to set yourself apart. I mean, it looks nice, but, you know, it's not the real Michiri. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Oh, nice! Oh my god, let's go, bro. That was awesome. Oh, 
みんなで勝とう誰も知らない俺たちはああなあ、we're straight. I don't know how, but we're good. <laughs> nah. Nice, okay. Aw. Oh. oh, she's in awe? I love that. <laughs> so is Tondro. That's so epic. Yeah, guys, you know. Even though in that moment for Mitsudi, you know, the guys that she was meeting wasn't accepting her for how she is. But there's always a place. Always a place that'll accept you. Yes, exactly. Acknowledged by the master. Exactly. Exactly. Dude, spitting straight facts. Guys, if you're unique, which is so cool... Anyone who shits on you is merely projecting their own insecurities. See how she flourishes as she's being herself, like... I love that. Okay, so this guy's Iguro. Does he have a little crush on her? Because, you know, this guy just sh shit on Tengen, so... Yeah, and he seems like... It's his way of flirting a little bit. Yep, yep. Yeah, he got a little, he got a little thing for me to do. Alright. Alright, at least, you know... He's got an ounce of good in him. <laughs> oh, yeah, let's go. Let it rip. Exactly. Bro, she's about to go Super Saiyan on him. Let's go. Oh! Again, I know they said she was strong, but she just caught that thing. Nah, she's badass. Yeah, go for the main body. Nice. <laughs> oh yeah, let's go, baby. Nah, this is so hype. <laughs> yeah, be scared, be scared. Nah, she's in the zone. Wait, wait, demon's crest? Is that not a burn mark? Like Tanjiro Muichiro's? Oh, she said she also has to get her heart rate high. A lot like Tanjiro has to get hot in order to... What? Nah, what? Wow, what a twist. He said that's like a demon's crest, though. True. Tanjiro, come on. We're not worried about upset stomach. Oh. Huh. Oh, nice. Oh, damn. Bleeding on contact. Oh, yeah, I mean, it's done. That's huge. Oh, 
I mean, damn, it's so small. I mean, a bit, it's easy to miss. <laughs> Just tiptoeing. Don't mind me. Nice. Oh, wow. Tondro's not messing around. I love how well they display Tanjiro's conviction. Oh, nice. Mm. Mm, I think I understand what happened and, you know, for him to turn out like this. <laughs> no way. No shot, bro. <laughs> I like the effort. Nice. Bro, oh my lord. These episodes are flying. Alright, everybody. So that was Love Hashira, Mitsuri, Kanroji, and oh my god. Dude, this episode spit straight facts the entire way through. There's, there's one thing that I just cannot stand. It's when people hide the unique things about them that make them them. There's no point, you know, even if it's not deemed worthy by society, if there is something about you that is unique, cool, different, something that makes you you, like never ever hide it. You know, Mitsuri is strong, she's got a different hair color, and she can eat a lot. And for those reasons, you know, people didn't want to marry her, whatever. Someone will love you in the end, right? We see Tanjiro appreciating her, everyone loves her. It's like, it just depends on where you are. If where you are right now, people aren't accepting you, you know, they're telling you to change, telling you to like... Now granted, if there's something wrong with you, and if there's something actually bad that you're doing or consequential to you or society, then yeah, definitely change. But like, if it's something like the fact that you eat a lot or, you know, your hair color or the fact that you're strong or if it's something that is characteristic of you that makes you unique and special and flourish, like, man, don't hide that. And it just so happens she's an insanely strong Hashira accepted by the master. She's got a mark, but Hantengu or Upper Four or, you know, the kid demon said that it's like a demon crest. And I didn't catch the line, but Mitsuri said, you know, she doesn't want other people to think that she's not human. I think that's what she said. They didn't say that she's a part of the sun breathing lineage. And I don't think she is either. Granted, her location and her parents don't resemble that lineage like Muichiro's father did. But it's the same mark. I wonder if it's because it's on her neck. It doesn't count as the sun breathing lineage. But the method of but the method of getting it is the same. Muichiro had to get in the zone. Tanjiro has to, you know, heat up his, you know, temperature, get a fever going. So unlocking like the mark is the same. But I'm confused on how Mitsuri could have that. I mean, she's not a part of the sun breathing lineage, but but it's different. It's also a different mark too. I don't have a single correlating factor in order to put anything together to conclude the fact that she could have that mark. You know, he even makes the point she's gotten stronger, she's gotten faster. It's because she's, you know circulating her blood faster she's heating up so but then again we didn't even see we didn't see her mark burn into her though it just kind of appeared um when they started to get into her flashback as the kid demon was going in for the punch uh i was like bro there's no way this is a ringoku 2.0 because we had a little bit of a ringoku flashback going and of course we see mitsuri absolutely snapping on this thing she's protecting tanjiro nezuko and ginya to go chase down the main body she blocks one of the dragons from reaching them uh she she also caught one that one was surprising. Again, I know they were talking about, you know, she's strong, but like, you know, there's really no quantitative factor on strong. So we now see how she, she can literally catch one of those dragon heads. Stupid, insanely strong. What a flashback. What a fight scene. What an episode. The camera angles, bro. As she's jumping and she's flying around. Bro, these last couple episodes have just been insane. Again, this one and the last one flew by. Even the Mu and Muichiro flew by. So we ended up tracking down the main body to Hantengu. I thought we were going to get a flashback to him, but we only got a little taste. I remember making the point that the only reason why he's that strong is because he's trying to run. He's trying to flee. And, you know, although that wasn't exactly correct, I'm getting the gist that, you know, in his previous life, he was accused of something. He was accused of lying. And he said he's never uttered a lie in his life. 
and I'm assuming he got persecuted for that, um, and which is why he's now become a demon who's terrified, who's scared. You know, no one's ever had any sympathy for me. I never lied. Like, you know, I'm assuming he got blamed for something, uh, which led to his death, and um, he became a demon. Which I guess technically he didn't die because he became a demon. But while he was human, he was blamed for lying, even though he never did. And so, because he was never shared any sympathy, he cries and he's scared and he's terrified. Again, that's so ass. Like, yeah, it's extremely unfortunate that that would happen to Han Tengu, which is how he became how he is. Which is why that the kid demon said, you know, how dare you prey on something innocent. But again, I love how they displayed Tanjiro's conviction when he went in to go slash him. He said, no, nah, you've got to take responsibility for your actions. Like, you know, tough shit. You know, I know that, you know, you were done dirty in your previous life. But that doesn't justify you, you know, killing hundreds of people. So now you have to pay. Now you know what goes around comes around. But as far as my notes go for this past episode, that is all I have. I hope you guys enjoyed. I sure as hell did, man. Dude, this episode is spitting facts. Great action. I love Mitsuri, bro. She's awesome. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys did enjoy, I have the full reaction on Patreon. I also have a Discord. Both of those links will be in the description below. And if you guys enjoyed, please consider liking and subscribing. I greatly appreciate it. All right, hope you all all have a good one.